A warm hello from Nancy and me to everyone who sees this. We are keeping well and we hope you are too. Today's lesson is the story of the journey to Emmaus. Two people are taking the seven mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus and Jesus joins them, but they do not recognize him. As this lesson is read, notice the mood of Cleopas and his friend as the story starts and then how it changes and why it changes. Their mood changes enough for them to do the return journey to Jerusalem in the dark in order to share their good news with the 11 apostles and their companions. Luke chapter 24 verses 13 to 35. Now on that same day the two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning. And when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen the vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, whilst he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. And they were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. And then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread Amen. so we know how cleopas and his friends were feeling at the start of the story they were in grief and shock over several weeks they had traveled with jesus the difficult road to jerusalem they had seen all that had happened up to and including the crucifixion 
It was true that they knew that some of the women had been to the tomb early on that morning and discovered that the body of Jesus was not there. They also knew that angels had told them that Jesus was alive. But during that Sunday, they couldn't get their minds around all that had happened. As they walked, they were trying to process that. When we have had bad news or are living through a difficult time, it's not easy to change our frame of mind. It's hard to believe good news and to have hope that life is going to be better. But by the end of the story, they knew that Jesus had been with them. He had reminded them of passages of scripture. He had told them that they were slow to believe. And eventually they had recognized Jesus as he broke bread. At the moment, we are missing meeting in church, which is one of the main ways by which our faith is strengthened. There we hear the scriptures read and explained. There we break bread and recognize that Christ is in our midst. Although we cannot meet in our usual way, we must still believe that the risen Jesus walks with us as saviour and as the light of the world. And we must continue to say our prayers. So a prayer. Lord Jesus, when things happen that we find hard to deal with, when our head goes down and our eyes see no further than our own feet, Help us to trust you're there, even when we cannot see or feel you close. Then gently tilt our faces to look into yours, to find there the compassion, patience and courage we need. We bring to you those who are struggling at the moment, families, people living alone, those who cannot leave their home, those who are ill at home or in hospital. We pray for all who are caring for others in hospitals, care homes and in their own homes. We pray for all those who are working and for those who cannot work and for all those who mourn. Lord Jesus, who joined the journey to Emmaus, join the journeys of all for whom we pray. Speak into each life to bring strength and courage and to rekindle the flame of hope. For your name's sake. Amen. And a verse from an Easter hymn based on this story. Day is far spent and night is nigh. Stay with us, Saviour, through the night. Talk with us, touch us tenderly, lead us to peace, to rest, to light. Dispel our darkness with thy face, radiant with resurrection grace.